So, America. Ireland has a close personal relationship with the United States of America. But we are not the same. Oh no, no, no. We are a little bit different in many ways. And today I want to talk about some things from Ireland that just would not work in the United States of America. They just would be no-goes. Before we get into today's video, do be sure to like, subscribe, comment, share, all that blah, blah de blah. Otherwise, the next time you go to take a nice piece of bread out of the fridge or bread bin, nay, whatever you use, it's going to have green mold on it. That's unfortunate. So unless you want that Irish curse to befall you, like, share, comment, subscribe, all that blah, blah, blah. Okay, the first thing from Ireland that would not work in America. It's post to random addresses. Did you know we only recently brought in the official air code, AKA postcode to Ireland? And pretty much nobody's using it because people are kind of snooty about postcodes in Ireland. Like there's Dublin 6 and there's Dublin 6W and there's a major distinction between the two. There really isn't, but people think there is. In Ireland, it has been known that post has been sent to Mick up the road in Enniscary and been delivered. America, for obvious reasons, is way too big with way too many people, so that couldn't happen. The next thing in Ireland that would not fly in America is crashing your car and not reporting it to the police. This one needs some clarification. So basically you are required legally to report your crash to the police, but people don't because it affects their insurance. They just sort it between themselves. Two individuals can settle it between them. You can have one party pay the other party and say, sorry about that. Usually you'll exchange numbers and you'll come to some kind of agreement and that'll be that. The next thing that I don't think would work in America, although I do believe you do it, is knickknacks. Knick knack knock. I believe in America they're called like ding dang dong door dash or something. Ding dong dead. Basically when you're a kid you go up somebody's door, you knock on it and you run away. <laughs> I don't know. It's endlessly amusing as a child. Now although I have been led to understand that you do do them in America, there's also the little threat of getting pew pewed. And if you don't know what pew pew means, it's something I have to say because you're not allowed to say some things on YouTube. Pew pew. Are you not afraid as a child of getting pew pewed by your crazy neighbour or do you just pick the people carefully before you do it? In Ireland you can knickknack on any single door in the whole country and like the chances of them having a sawn off shotgun are pretty mild. Oh no, I definitely can't say that. And yet, you just did. The next thing that Irish people do that would not work in America is not saying exactly what you mean. And honestly, in Ireland, there is a lot of reading between the lines of what people mean. The classic example is being offered something in somebody's home and saying no three times before you accept. In America, they're just way straightforward. Like they will say to your face that they think you're too tall or too short or whatever. Americans are very straight up. Irish people will dance around the truth. I've definitely noticed within my American audience that for some people I ha do have to like explicitly say what I mean. Sarcasm. Yes. Whereas my Irish viewers or even my Irish American viewers kind of get more, because they use it more, the reading in between the lines thing. A classic example of people who do this all the time are the Gardaí. Very often the Gardaí will pull a car over and if they think your offence is kind of mild, they don't want to deal with the paperwork, they'll give you a little clue like, you know, you'd want to watch that glove compartment there. They can't be doing that thing. They can't do that. Because they know you've got something naughty in your glove compartment. I just don't think this kind of subtlety works on a wider spectrum in America. Americans just like you to be straight up. They like you to say exactly what you mean. Whereas kind of dancing around heavy things is appreciated in Ireland. The next thing that would not fly in America is how recently people have only been able to get divorces. Relatively recently, like things have evolved majorly. Up until 1995, Divorce was prohibited in Ireland. There was a constitutional prohibition on divorce. In order to get a divorce, people would often go to Britain 
or lived there for a while or whatever it was. Done with this sort of thing. Careful now. It's much more common was separation. A lot of families lived apart and they would have their other partner and all that but it just wasn't really talked about. In order to be granted a divorce in Ireland you have to live apart for six years and you have to stay in that unhappy marriage for whatever reason. It was only in 2019 that we were granted the right to divorce quicker than that but they still make it difficult with all the paperwork. It's not as easy as it is in America. I don't think that would fly in America, especially given how young people get married over there. The divorce rate is like 50%, right? I don't think Americans would like that. You like your right to do everything and divorce is one of them. The next thing that would not work in America is pay for toilets. And again, I'm gonna go down to people always stating their rights in America and I've gotta assume you would state that you have a fundamental right to pee for free. That was very crap. But in Ireland, we have pay for use facilities. And I'm not saying it's a lot of money, usually it's like 20 cent or 10 cent. And in order to use the facilities, you give this much because it goes toward the people who run the bathrooms and clean the bathrooms. In America, I have seen porta potties like everywhere. You have public bathrooms everywhere and they're for free to you, so I cannot see you guys bringing that in at all. The next thing that wouldn't fly in America is not being allowed to shave in your bathrooms. There are no plugs in bathrooms in Ireland. You have to dry your hair in your bedroom or elsewhere. The only plugs that are available in bathrooms are usually ones in hotels for shavers only. Like you can only plug a certain type of shaver into them. You can't plug like a regular thing in, which is kind of weird because if you think about it, there are plugs in kitchens and there's water in kitchens too. I'm in Spain at the moment and there are plugs in the bathrooms and I'm suddenly seeing how freaking useful it is to have plugs in the bathrooms. It is so good. Anyway, I cannot see them ever taking away your plugs in bathrooms over there. So the next thing that would not fly in America is our teeny tiny roads that are so so windy, so windy. Of course there are roads in America that are teeny tiny, but in Ireland they are commonplace. They're everywhere. You usually can't get from one place to another outside of the city without having to go up a tiny, windy country road. Your American cars would not fit. Like they just straight up wouldn't fit down them. Yes, Barry with the tractor can navigate it, but you are not that skilled. I'm kidding, you're probably a fantastic driver, but it just wouldn't fly. American roadways are huge, you are 10 across in Texas. It just, it, you would not like our tiny windy country roads. I kind of think they're charming, but yeah. The next thing that would not fly in America, and I've had some mixed feedback on this one, so let me know in the comments. I put it up on Twitter because I wasn't sure. In Ireland, we get speeding tickets in the post, and this is like a huge money maker for the Irish government. In fact, so much so that it is called a racket. We have speed trap cameras that are hidden along roadsides and if they catch you going over a certain speed, within two weeks or three weeks in the post you'll get a letter saying that you owe a certain amount of money. Now you can go to court and argue this but they'll have caught your license plate on that speed trap camera. The interesting thing about this is they don't care who is driving the car. The fine goes to the person who is registered as owning that car. So. If it was somebody else driving your car, that's your tough. They're gonna have to pay you. You have to pay the government. I've heard in America that you have these for running red lights. If you run a red light in Ireland, you're going to be in more trouble than a fine. I've heard that some places have tried to bring in these speed trap cameras, but that a lot of you guys aren't having it and take them to court saying that you have to be served these notices face to face. I even heard that some of you guys have these airplane radars that fly above you trying to catch you going too fast. But yeah, it's crazy. And the number one thing that you would not be able to get in America that you have in Ireland is, and I'm going to try and phrase this as nicely as possible. Okay, so basically what I'm trying to say is in Ireland, your restaurants would not fly. Restaurants like Hooters. You see, Ireland has a lot of very, very, very religious and old-fashioned people. And when they tried to open a place called Stringfellows in Dublin, it was a no. It was a no because we have this unique group of people who go and protest the opening 
of certain businesses. In America, you just wouldn't have that because business comes first. They successfully managed to eventually get that strip club shut down. It was a very mainstream strip club, a popular franchise from the UK. It just didn't work in Ireland because of those kinds of people. I do have to say though that when I brought that subject up on my Patreon, they came up with some amazing Hooters versions for Irish people. So there was Erin Gabralis, Sham Knockers, and I can't remember the other one. Oh please, if you have good ideas for the name of uh, Irish Hooters, let me know below in comments because the creativity is amazing. That's it for today, a couple of shout outs. The first shout out is one of my favorite of all time and it comes from the random stranger. He wants to shout out all pets. He says they're the hardest working creatures in the world the last two years. They're still helping keep us sane or less insane through these tough times. Great one, thank you so much to the random stranger. And the second shout out I wanna give to my parents who are actually minding my little pet right now, Chewy. Thank you so much guys for minding him like he's a little baby. I would not have been able to travel without you and get the surgery that I need so thanks guys you know i love you very much <laughs> and that's it for today see you on the other side bye do you need another cow's eel is this your cow's eel do we need to go and get you a new one